fall of 2016, we had our first investment conference in New York City, and John flew up from North Carolina. Uh, and John Borman is a Trent follower, died in the wall through and through. That's what he does. And he came to sit in a room full of financial advisors talking about index funds and building a business and all sorts of things, onboarding clients, that sort of stuff. So I can't imagine that he took anything away from it for, uh, you know, to enhance his business or his education in the market. But that's the type of friend he is. He came to support us. And during lunch, uh, I remember I sat at a table with, with my dad who was there and John. And my dad is a dentist. He knows nothing about the financial services industry or the market or anything like that. And he knows nothing about Twitter and you know how important it is to us and how much time we spend on it and the friends that we make along the way, you know, the strangers who become friends. And I remember talking to either Chris or Barry and just sitting like looking at my dad and John talk. And it was just a sort of a surreal moment. You know when your your you know two worlds collide, people in your life that don't know each other. It's just a really interesting moment. And I'll never forget that. And so I said to my my dad uh, after lunch, my uh, my dad said to me what a nice guy. And that's what John is. He's a nice guy. And I'm sure they were talking about, you know, the Rolling Stones and music from, from that era and all this sort of stuff that, that John loves. And I'm so glad that out of anybody in my, in my you know, Twitter universe that my dad could have spent time with to get a, a, a feel for who these people were, it's John. And uh, John is just a special guy. And I feel fortunate to, to call him a friend and to, you know, in some small way, go on this journey with him. Um, so, John, we love you. So I first met John years ago, like uh, like a lot of the rest of us, following him on Twitter, uh, at different parties around the country, whether it was in New York or California. So we just had like kind of like a lot of the same friends. And we do all these like stupid superlatives at the end of some of these conferences, like best hair and things like that. John would always win best hair. And I didn't realize John was a rock star. Like he was a rock star, like, you know, in finance and in trend following and like Twitter, but like, he really is a rock star. Like, you know, we've seen him, I, we went out late night, you know, we had too much to drink probably. And John wanted to go to karaoke joint. I'm like, all right, you know, pretty standard uh, stuff around here, late night karaoke. Dude gets on the mic and my, 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 my I couldn't like believe that this was coming out of his mouth. I mean, the guy is really, really talented with singing. I'm like, oh my God, is anybody else seeing this? So it kind of caught me off guard and just really, uh, you know, to me, uh, showed me that he's got a lot of talents. It's not just, uh, you know, in the market, but in, in music and everything like that. And I think, you know, one of the things that's always stood out about John, uh, really his passion uh, for a lot of things, obviously for the market that's how we're all friends and everything like that but really for life uh and i've seen him you know traveling to arizona and new york and rome and and trying to get as much traveling as he can so uh, definitely without a doubt one of my favorite people in the world and i know that you can ask dozens and dozens of uh, my closest friends and they will tell you the same thing so from me and from all of us uh we love you john so I guess the first thing I want to say about John, and I think I've known him eight or nine years, this industry is filled with people who are like very competitive, which is not the worst thing, but sometimes in the spirit of competition, people get carried away, people get nasty, people get edgy. Um, John is like the opposite of everyone that I've met involved in trading and Wall Street and financial social media. Like, John's friends with everyone. I've never seen him have a problem with anyone. And uh, he's just like, there's such a huge contrast between the way John carries himself, the way he smiles when he meets people, um, the way people instantly like him. Like, there are very few people like that, unfortunately, in, uh, in our thing. So John stood out, like from the first time I met him, just totally unassuming guy had been a very successful trader uh, at big banks, was now trading on his own, and was just looking to meet people and learn. And it was like really refreshing to meet somebody that didn't have like another, you know, an alternative agenda. So when I first heard that uh, John was sick, I kind of like the way I felt about it was, no, 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 this doesn't happen to John Borman. Just hearing, um, 
how he was talking with his kids about it and some of the conversations that they were having and how brave he was and you know talking about how he wanted to spend his time now that he wasn't trading professionally and some of the things that he wanted to do so i just remember being struck by like how how uh just how incredibly brave and and uh focused he was on like all right this is what's going on and this is what i'm gonna do about it and i just thought that was so admirable you know we for a living we talk to people about their money and all of those conversations are not really about money they're not really about what's going on in the stock market all of those conversations are about the future and what's going to happen and what are what are we going to use the money for and how are we going to increase the joy in our family and how are we going to take the hard work we've done in the past and the present and make that into something in the future i think sometimes we take for granted the fact that these curveballs come out of nowhere and plans can change very very quickly very radically and you know this is unfortunately it's a it's a reminder of that um, but it's also an affirmation that what we're supposed to be doing is living in the moment what we're supposed to be doing is maximizing our joy today and yeah it's important to pl plan for the future and yeah we have to sacrifice things in the present but like we have no guarantees and so what john represents to me is somebody that it's just always been such a cheerful person and I think always, you know, living in the moment and uh, there's a lot that us uh, New Yorkers can, can learn from, from that mentality um, as we shuffle through these underground tunnels with our heads down every day. I love John and uh, just happy to be spending time with him right now and he, he just inspires like this feeling of, wow, here's somebody that's dealing with something and look at the, the courage, look at the bravery. So, like, I, I just hope that I could have even an ounce of that. So, I met John a couple of times at some of our conferences. We've gone to dinner. Um, and he's a really nice guy, and everybody has probably said that over and over again. But he's more than a nice guy. He reflects a certain philosophy and a certain courage that most of us are never tested on, and, and even when we are, um, we often lack the ability to honor our own beliefs. And, and I want to reference this coin given to me uh, by Ryan Holiday, who, like John, is a Stoic. And the coin, which John has written about and tweeted about, uh, says, Memento Mori, uh, literally means someday we all shall die. And in the uh, a story that's, that Ryan Holiday does a very nice job explaining um, from Marcus Aurelius's uh, writings, uh, a famous um, Greek general uh, would come back in victory from his uh, various exploits and, and invasions around the world, and there was a slave paid to continuously say to him, memento mori, as a reminder that he's only a mortal man and he shouldn't think about these adoring crowds and throngs of people celebrating his great victory um, in battle as anything more than just a passing moment. And it's, it's easy to talk that sort of game. It's easy to philosophically say, I know one day we're all gonna pass. But when I look at how John has handled himself following his diagnosis and the various treatment he, he is a person who sets the standard for everybody else. He's a person who not only believes in a certain philosophy, but shows us how to live it. He is the standard that a lot of us aspire towards. There aren't a lot of people in the world like John, uh, and we wish there were more people like him. I believe that Whatever time we have on this earth is a gift, and people like John, through their deeds and words and action, remind us of that all the time.